week's edition of Farmers Connection, a presentation of the Ministry of Agriculture, and brought to you with the compliments this week of the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, the Ghana Rice Development Board, and the GLDA. On this week's program, we will be taking a look at the local rice industry. I sat down with the General Manager of the GRDB for a look at what's happening in the industry, where we are in terms of production and of the prospects for the future. We will also hear from the Rice Research Station about the achievements so far and what the future holds in terms of rice varieties and its prospects for farmers. Farmers Connection is produced for television by Matrix Video Productions and Advertising based in East Burbese. I am your host, Christopher Holder. An important aspect of the GRDB's six steps to a successful rice crop is the use of balanced nutrition. One part of this practice includes the incorporation of mixed fertilizers such as the NPKs or separately as TSP and a myriad of potash. This is done after the first cut during the dry period. If conditions does not allow for application on dry soil, then the next best time is before leveling. Incorporation before planting ensures that nutrients are present in the soil for access by the young seedlings. Through fertilizer before you, you plow the land or before you, you, you plant. You, you throw the TSP, the, the um, potash, and then you rake, level up your land. And you throw All your fertilizer land. recommendations should be based on chemical soil analysis, a message from the extension arm of the Guyana Rice Development Board. Householders, the fumigant aluminum phosphide, commonly known as carbon tablets, is a highly restricted use pesticide that should only be handled by trained professionals in the pest control business. This fumigant is among the deadliest in the world and should only be applied in sealed or enclosed places. It must never be used in the home office or where humans live, work or play. It is not a rat bait and should never be used as such. A message from the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, Ministry of Agriculture. Cattle farmers, here is an important reminder. The slaughter of productive female cattle is counterproductive to the long-term growth of the local cattle industry. It has been revealed that of the 18,000 cattle slaughtered annually for beef, 50% are productive females. This is an illegal practice in the absence of adequate veterinary certification and can result in heavy fines and imprisonment of up to two years. The Guyana Livestock Development Authority, GLDA, is advising cattle farmers to desist from the slaughter of uncertified productive females. In the event a farmer has earmarked productive females for slaughter, the GLDA will offer to buy those animals from the farmer. Farmers who wish to take advantage of this offer can contact the GLDA on telephone number 220-6556-7 of the GLDA veterinarian in your area. Stop the slaughter of productive females. Help in the national effort to increase the stock of quality herds. A message from the GLDA. Ministry of Agriculture. On this week's edition, we begin the first of a two-part series in the local rice industry. On this week's program, we hear from the administrators of the industry and the figures relative to rice production for 2015 thus far, rice prices internationally, and its impact on local prices paid to farmers, research and extension successes thus far, and the way forward as it relates to sourcing markets for rice. In the second installment of this two-part feature, we will have a conversation with farmers, millers, and the administrators of the industry all together on the current state of the industry and the way forward as they see it. There can be no argument that despite the increasing levels of rice production in Guyana, the industry is facing its most significant challenge, staying viable in the face of the current depressed rice prices internationally. It is a well-known fact that the price a farmer is paid for paddy is determined by the price a miller gets for processed rice or paddy on the international market. During the time of the Venezuelan market for rice, millers enjoyed around the $700 a ton of white rice and paid farmers just about $3,000 per bag for a grade A paddy supplied to the mill. With the Venezuelan market no longer an option, millers have been paying farmers prices of between $1,800 to $2,400 per bag of A grade paddy. 
Farmers say this is going to send them to the poorhouse, as it does not cover cost of production. That is, of course, those who are actually paid for the paddy supplied to the miller, further compounding the hardships being experienced by farmers. Rice farmers across Guyana are owed millions by millers for paddy supply during the first crop, and are once again being offered contracts by millers for the supply of paddy for this final crop of 2015. In defense of millers, however, they say they purchased paddy from farmers during the first crop of 2015 at $3,000 per bag, anticipating shipment to Venezuela. This did not happen, and alternative markets had to be sourced at nearly half the price they expected. This resulted in the shortfall in earnings and the subsequent difficulty meeting their obligations to rice farmers for the first crop, thus the perception of a crisis. I sat down with Mr. Nizam Hassan, the general manager of the Guyana Rice Development Board, for a conversation on the local rice industry and where we are today. The GRDB has been singing uh, the praises of uh, the achievements in terms of the increases in yields. The research station has been bringing out varieties of rice that um, have resulted in higher yields for farmers. Um, the six-point plan, uh, uh, on the whole, has been hailed a success in terms of getting farmers to uh, incorporate better agronomic practices in the cultivation of rice. Now that farmers have been able to uh, increase their yields to levels that are uh, considered economically uh, beneficial, they're well, at least breaking even in terms of cost versus uh, profit even though the price was depressed along the way, or not to their liking, as it were. Now that the GRDB has achieved this, this is now on the year watch. Um, what is the focus of GRDB now, uh, going forward, in the immediate uh, year ahead, perhaps? Right, so thank you, Chris. It's about continuing to build on the work that uh, the board has done with respect to research, extension, and providing the services, other services in marketing. Marketing, of course, we have uh, shipping and logistics uh, that we coordinate, but it's to build and enhance um, on those things that we've done before. What is the message that you want to share to uh, farmers? Um, obviously, things are not so good in the rice industry, not only in Guyana, but Guyana's reality is influenced by what is happening on the international uh, scene, uh, right. the, the markets overseas. Right. Um, perhaps you can give us an overview of uh, the price of rice on the international market today, and what has influenced this decline in, in price on the international market, a factor that directly influences the price a farmer will get per bag of, of patty in Blackbush or in Essequibo or wherever. Um, just give us a breakdown of how it works. Right. The Oriza White Rice Index, which is an index that is used globally uh, to monitor uh, white rice prices, uh, has shown over the past two years that white rice prices have been declining. So much so, at the end of September, um, price was as low as 390, 391 US dollars per ton. Um, that is uh, seemed uh, that is researched to be because there was uh, great production globally of rice. There has been a lot of stock uh, being held by countries. That situation um, from the projections of Oriza is expected to change because of the El Nino situation, um, the e effect or the impact of El Nino on global production will see that the price of rice, white rice especially, will start to, um, it will start to climb up. The top producers, Thailand, Vietnam, um, those are the price setters. Yes. It is always said yeah. in Ghana, uh, we are price takers. takers. Right. Um, bearing this in mind, what should farmers be doing now in terms of their production levels? Well, farmers need to zero in on every single aspect of their cost of production. They need to, as you mentioned earlier about the six point plan, um, follow the recommendations of the GRDB extension officers, but also they themselves need to zero in on every aspect of their production to see where they can uh, save. The idea is to get the production of paddy um, more efficient. You need to improve on productivity. 
So, for instance, um, in the use of their uh, tractors, in terms of how often they use it, the fuel that is being used, ensuring them that the, the equipment, the machines, um, serviced and that they get any uh, efficient service from the, from you know from the tractors or the combines or whatever they use. Um, they need to manage their costs in terms of um, you know fertilizer. Well, I know that they can't. Um, there isn't an influence that. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah, I know that they can't. Uh, let's say amend or adjust the fertilizer prices because they don't control that. That's what the suppliers uh, give to them. But there are different aspects of their productions that they, uh, their production cost. It's, it's really zeroing in on managing the overall cost. If it is said that probably eight to five thousand dollars per acre, that's what it costs. See if we can reduce that um, by managing some of the other costs uh, uh, that are involved. One of the successes of the GRDB six point plan over the last seven years is is getting farmers to change their cultural practice of growing rice the way they, they used to. Uh, your extension service uh, did, did a wonderful job in getting farmers to adopt this measure. Your last survey showed that 80% of Guyana's rice farmers were, were incorporating the six points into their cultivation. It is now imperative that for a rice farmer to survive, he has to reduce the cost of production even further. He has to, at the same time, increase his yield because the average yield now is around 35 bags per acre, thereabouts. Um, a feasible figure in terms of yield is, is being bandied at about 45 uh, to 50 bags per acre. Um, it has been suggested in some quarters that um, farmers consider downsizing the acreage under cultivation incorporate better management in terms of, of, of the agronomic practices and therefore reduce cost, increase yield and therefore will break even. What role do you see your extension offices playing in educating farmers in this regard? Right, you, you, you hit the, the nail on the head there is education, information dissemination and uh, working to build the capacity or in, uh, supporting the understanding of the farmer by working directly with them and some of the input suppliers. Um, one of the things that some input suppliers have said to us is that we need to manage the nutrients of the, the ground, the soil. And sometimes we only apply the urea fertilizer only. Uh, we need to look at doing soil tests and see what are my, if there are other micronutrients that are needed in the soil. So you don't just go applying urea only, but you apply fertilizers that are relevant and that are needed by that particular um, land wherever it's located. And that will help to improve the productivity that you just mentioned. So I see the GRDB working collaboratively with the farmer and with also input suppliers um, in getting the information out to the farmers. Will you be recommending uh, resting uh, lands utilized for rice. We know farmers try to get two uh, crops, some, some try to manage three crops in a year. Um, and, and the criticism has been that the land is not being allowed to breathe. And so that is why in one instance it was recommended that a farmer should rest the, the, the land, just plant one crop per, per, per year, allowing the land to rest uh, for, for six months and then go back to the land, um, allowing perhaps cattle to graze in, in the rested uh, lands. Um, has the GRDB considered the, this as part of a message perhaps that will be disseminated in, in, in the months and year ahead? We will have to do the research to see uh, you know, the benefits of, of, of such uh, resting of the land because of course it's in, the farming or the growing of rice is, is an economic activity uh, that brings revenue uh, to the farmer for its sustenance. So we would have to do that kind of research to, to, to show or to support uh, once we decide to, to do that. But generally in agricultural production, there's, um, well, firstly there's crop rotation, but then there's also about resting land and, and going around. So um, agricultural crop farmers, not necessarily 
rice crop farmers, but general agriculture, it's recommended that you rest your land over after a number of years or so. You rest the land for a period and, and you go on. But specifically to rice, I think we would have to do that kind of research before we can make that recommendation. Farmers have often been asked, how much does it cost to produce an acre of rice? And for the most part, they're not too sure exactly. They have a ballpark figure. It is recommended in any business model that a farmer approach agriculture, in this case we're talking rice, as a business. So you budget in terms of input and what you expect to earn out of whatever investments you've made in rice. Is there any uh, scope for perhaps allowing farmers uh, to be exposed to, to education in, in, in this area of, of budgeting and, and, and planning as, to, as regards uh, rice cultivation to make them better business managers, as it were, for the land? Uh, the general culture is that rice farmers sit around uh, complaining about the price of rice. And for the last 10, 15 years, the rice price has basically been around the general $2,000 to $3,000 a bag uh, per, 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 per bag of paddy supplied to, to a miller. Um, they've always cried, oh, this is too little bit, we can't survive, how we can go back to the crop. But they have gone back to the crop. Um, one farmer told me during uh, uh, some interviews we had with them on the cost of production that 27 bags is the cost per acre uh, for, for, for him. And in the end, it's, it's profit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, how, how do you see the GRDB helping to educate the farmer, make him a better businessman? Right. You know we already have these farmer field schools um, that we run regularly. And secondly, uh, here again, through our uh, extension program, other extension, farmer schools, field schools is one, but also the general extension program of going into the fields and, and talking one-on-one -on -one with farmers, and then also bringing them to specific locations um, where we can do these kinds of training, because I fully agree with you apart from the technical and agronomic practices um, that we would go tell farmers, we also have to inculcate and advance the kind of business orientation, the business thinking that farmers um, need to, you know, get involved in their operations. All right, let's talk about some figures relative to rice production for 2015 so far. What are the figures like today? So far for the um, well for the year in terms of uh, um, the hectares that have been prepared by farmers is almost two hundred thousand. The exact figure is one hundred and ninety one thousand hectares that have been prepared for both crops. With respect to paddy production, um, to date we are at eight hundred and thirty three thousand um, metric tons of paddy harvested. Do you know how much uh, more acres, uh, hectares, have to be harvested? Uh, do you think we'll make that million mark this year? Oh, well, we, we would. I think we would. Uh, it's just um, just under 60% of the crop have been harvested, as we're speaking. All right, let's talk price uh, per bag of paddy uh, for farmers this crop. Um, we know that the Venezuelan market is no longer here. Um, during the period of the Venezuelan market, um, rice farmers got $3,000 a bag if they got A grade paddy. Um, this crop, uh, I understand that the, the price ranges between $2,200 to $2,500 yeah. a bag for A grade. Um, this does not reflect much of a difference in terms of the price the farmer is getting today as against what he got while the Venezuelan market was there. That, that's a good observation, Chris. Um, the, the, the price range of the agrid paddy, from what we have seen, it's around that uh, 1800 2000 $2,200, $2,400. That's it's, it's range in there. Um, and you're right, uh, when the Venezuelan, when paddy was bought uh, for the Venezuelan market, the farmers were getting $3,000 a bag. Uh, at that time, of course, rice was being sold at a much higher price than uh, 
what the millers are getting now for their um, rice sold on the open markets. All right. So in terms of, of, of earnings um, from the sale of paddy to millers right. by farmers, the income level is not affected that much. Farmers have always complained about price and for the last 10 years, even in the best of times, it has never gone past 3, 5 or, or thereabouts per bag of paddy, except perhaps during the time of the OCT route in 1992, I think, or thereabouts, or 91, um, when LAC developed that route. Um, so the millers themselves uh, were the ones who benefited from the Venezuelan market um, in terms of the price they got per ton of, of, of white rice or paddy, as it were. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily um, agree with that. I think um, all the stakeholders benefited, the millers and the farmers uh, benefited from um, the price that Guyana was receiving uh, for its paddy and its rice uh, that was being sold on the Venezuelan market. Uh, it's, it, it wasn't only the millers that um, got the money, the farmers also got uh, that $2,000 range for value of paddy. So how worse off are we today with the loss of the Venezuelan market? The is it the death knell for the industry as some would like us to believe? Uh, if we look at the export data, um, notwithstanding the challenge or notwithstanding that a few months um, prior to the end of August, we were not sending anything at all to Venezuela. And the data is showing that 346,532 metric tons of rice was exported as of the end of August. Uh, compared to 281,000, well, well, let's round it off with 282,000 metric tons of uh, rice for a corresponding period of 2014. That's an increase of 23%. So, uh, were we still exporting to Venezuela uh, during those two months, July, June, July, and continuing to August or three months, uh, we would have definitely, see, definitely seen that uh, export volume being much higher. But the point I'm making is that notwithstanding the challenge of having, not having sent to Venezuela during, during those three months, we are still able to surpass our export data, period for period compared, by 23%. How is that possible? What uh, new markets have you captured? You know, the, 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 the millers have been very active in, in pursuing markets. Um, I know that some of the millers have gone into a new ground, new territory. The GRDB itself has been having discussions with uh, potential buyers across the globe. Um, there are some specific markets that we're looking at. Um, but to say that millers have gotten very active now, or more, they've, they've taken on that the need that they need to go um, look for some markets for themselves to ensure their own business sustainability. Your role as, as uh, I know the, the board has m m mandated itself to find new markets. Um, uh, how have uh, efforts in this regard been going? Progressing nicely. Um, we've said this before, we would not like to uh, come up now at this time uh, to say where and who we're talking to because it's we're in a business environment and um, there's some things when it goes public, it doesn't do um, us good then for us to put that kind of inf information out. Once we're, we've concretized all our discussions and, and we've come to some conclusions, uh, then we'll make it public. Would you at least say the prospects look very good? Prospects are good. Um, prospects are good. There is interest in, in, in our rice. We can sell all the rice that we have or all the party that we have. The challenge is we will have to sell it right now at the world market prices. And now, once we sell it at the world market prices, of course, uh, given the prices that we mentioned earlier, um, it would mean that the farmers can, can or may receive a lower price for uh, their paddy, um, which eventually may not you know, um, see them getting back into uh, that kind of production that they're accustomed to. All right. One of the key roles of the GRDB is uh, more or less regulating the relationship between millers and farmers, ensuring that the millers pay when they're supposed to pay uh, farmers, bearing in mind the challenges re uh, farmers are facing now in terms of, of balancing cost with income and so on. Right. Uh, it is important that they get paid uh, in time 
or in the time frame uh, stipulated in their contracts with the mills. Um, when when there is a problem in, in, in that flow of money or that relationship um, of, of supply and payment, the farmers find themselves in, in problems. They are already barely making it and then when there's delay in payment, it exacerbates an already challenging situation. <clears throat> how, how does the board plan to approach uh, dealing with this, enforcing the law, ensuring that without crippling the industry, because obviously we recognize that if you go and penalize the, the millers and they're really in a problem, and they can't genuinely pay farmers. <clears throat> you, you really want to find the middle ground. How, how do you see yourself walking this tightrope? It is definitely a tightrope, but we are walking there, we are urging the millers to um, clear their balances, especially for the first crop of this year. Um, millers that have to receive monies uh, for rice supplied, the rice that the GRDB coordinated the sale. Coordinate the sale. What we are not doing in Venezuela, we have been doing Panama. Uh, so those monies pass through the GRDB for payment to the millers. Um, on that, in that case, we, we, there's a formula that we've worked out and we urge the millers um, to effect the payment to the farmers. Some farmers and some millers have agreed that the GRDB can cut the checks directly to them. They authorize us for the money that is owed to the farmer. The miller will authorize us say that yes, just to confirm to you that I'm paying the farmer, here's my authorization for you to write the check directly to the farmer. So th there, there are things like that we have done and we can do. Um, to, to ensure that some amount of money is going out to the farmers. Cattle farmers, here is an important reminder. The slaughter of productive female cattle is counterproductive to the long-term growth of the local cattle industry. It has been revealed that of the 18,000 cattle slaughtered annually for beef, 50% are productive females. This is an illegal practice in the absence of adequate veterinary certification and can result in heavy fines and imprisonment of up to two years. The Guyana Livestock Development Authority, GLDA, is advising cattle farmers to desist from the slaughter of uncertified productive females. In the event a farmer has earmarked productive females for slaughter, the GLDA will offer to buy those animals from the farmer. Farmers who wish to take advantage of this offer can contact the GLDA on telephone number 220-6556-7 of the GLDA veterinarian in your area. Stop the slaughter of productive females. Help in the national effort to increase the stock of quality herds. A message from the GLDA. Ministry of Agriculture. Householders, the fumigant aluminum phosphide, commonly known as carbon tablets, is a highly restricted use pesticide that should only be handled by trained professionals in the pest control business. This fumigant is among the deadliest in the world and should only be applied in sealed or enclosed places. It must never be used in the home, office, or where humans live, work, or play. It is not a rat bait and should never be used as such. A message from the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, Ministry of Agriculture. An important aspect of the GRDB's six steps to a successful rice crop is the use of balanced nutrition. One part of this practice includes the incorporation of mixed fertilizers such as the NPKs or separately as TSP and a myriad of potash. This is done after the first cut during the dry period. If conditions does not allow for application on dry soil, then the next best time is before leveling. Incorporation before planting ensures that nutrients are present in the soil for access by the young seedlings. Through fertilizer before you, you plow the land or before you, you, you plant. You, you throw the TSP, the, the um, potash, and then you really level up your land. All fertilizer recommendations should be based on chemical soil analysis, a message from the extension arm of the Guyana Rice Development Board. The 
The concerns of Guyana's rice farmers are real. While most have been lauded for their adoption of improved agronomic practices that have resulted in improved yields per acre, delayed payment of the already low price of paddy supply to millers for the first crop of 2015 is crippling their cash flow and ability to prepare lands for the first crop in 2016. Many are threatening to scale back the acreage they cultivate. Speaking at the GRDB's open day at the Burma Research Station Maikoni recently, Chairman of the GRDB's Board of Directors, Mr. Claude Husti, said there is a glaring imbalance in the publication of information relative to the rice industry globally and how that impacts the local industry. He lamented that local news houses are only concerned with the problems as expressed by farmers and those who seek to promote political agenda by exacerbating the concerns of the farmer. Mr. Husti said the anthem sung by critics of the day called for the acquisitions of new markets for rice as the solution to the problems of Guyana's rice farmers. A religion into what seems to be a well-guarded secret. I have a list of more than 90 countries which import rice at least 10,000 tons a year. A list which starts in China which imposed in excess of 4 million tons. The secret I can now reveal is that over time, China has exported and rice, rice products, to more than 50 of these countries. In the event that I have a list in what I just said, 50 is 5 zero countries. So we have quite a ways to go if the list, as I said, mentioned is excessive negative. What I can also tell you is that among these important countries, there is a wide variety of types, quality, and specifications required. And each type, quantity, and specification earns a different price. Farmer Rice Research Station helps us to respond positively to market requirements, and this is why I have always referred to the researchers as among the unsung heroes in the industry. It is the work done so far in the engineering of improved, higher yielding varieties of rice that are blast resistant that provide the best answers to the plight of farmers today. Addressing attendees at the Burma Research Station's Open Day, research scientist and head of the station, Dr. Mahendra Pasad, spoke of the many breakthroughs realized by the efforts of the scientists in rice research. He pointed to the various high-yielding blast-resistant varieties, such as the 10, 12, 13, and BR14 varieties. The chief scientist also spoke of the station's seed paddy program, disclosing that the goal is to ensure as close to 100% purity as is possible. It is the mandate of the station for us from inception to develop, to maintain the purity of all the varieties that we've released and also to make available quality seeds to farmers. We have noticed, the farmers have noticed over the years and it's not happening the last couple of months from since the 1990s earlier in we could track back on all the newspaper. We have seen farmers in very much not uh, very happy with the quality of seeds that they will be receiving at certain intervals for a particular crop or for a particular field. The board have recognized that. And last year, the board have had an action plan for producing quality seeds for the rice resort station, for the farmers at the rice resort station. It's a multi-year program and we are only from last January to now, are only a year and a half, almost two years closing up into the program. We still have another year to go and I can guarantee you by the end of that program, where we are at this point in time in the program, we want to produce quality seeds, we want to improve the yields to the Resort farmers be very competitive too. We don't want to go back in the past. I will challenge, I challenge myself and the team that 
by 2016, all the seed body produced on the resource station must at least be 99 point something percent purity. And I'm proud to say we have almost achieved that at the Rice Resource Station. And we are not alone. The farmers are with us here too. Speaking to the board's mandate to increase yields to 8 tons and more per hectare, Dr. Poussat said work is well established in this regard. Over the past couple of years, well, since the station has been established, we have released close to 20 varieties. Um, in the past years, we have seen yields going, moving from zero, 20 to 25 bars per acre to 40, 45. And I'm sure as we have many farmers here who are already receiving 50 bars per acre. So we have to re release, and we'll be releasing our Indian varieties that are performing well in the farmers' field. But it's not only the yield that we are worried about. In this age, where we have, <coughs> sorry, where, where we are, <coughs> sorry, where we are exporting 70% and over of what we produce. We have to be careful with the milling, the cooking, and all the quality traits. Further, even before it reaches the miller and the household, we have to ensure that the plant, the variety, is able to withstand the harsh weather conditions that we are facing in the face of climate change. Yes, so we have to look at the logic, the issue of logic. We've been doing that. We have seen GRE 14 now, and the GRE 12 has been picking up very well. They are proving the test. So, we have seen also that the national deal with the improved management practice with the varieties that have been released have been improved from 2000 and zero, year 2000 from 4 point, for around 4 point zero tons per hectare to now 5.3 tons per hectare. And I'm predicting in the next couple of seasons we are going to reach 5 tons per hectare. And going above that, as we're talking about the yield, where we go from here? Is it a done deal? No, it is not a done deal. While some of our farmers now in this, right in this room are receiving 8 tons per hectare. Long time ago, I think some of our colleagues are still here. When I say we're going to get 40 bucks per acre, 50 bucks per acre, many of us thought I'm crazy. Well, yes. I'll again come in the, come under the microscope again. I'm saying that in the next couple of years' time, our varieties will be able to yield closer to 10 tons per hectare. That's the work that we are pushing for, for the farmers in Guyana. In some way, we know very well, 20 to 25 bars per acre, we cannot be competitive. If you have four or five thousand ton, four or five thousand dollars per bar, you're not going to be competitive with 20 to 25. You have to be more efficient and more productive. You have to be in the forties. And for us to be there and stay there, you have to get the technology which we are working along with you. And you also, the farmers, just like many farmers who have achieved that, I'm calling on you to improve your level and work with us. Work with us together. Rice, in this age, in this day, we have to grow rice in a more scientific way. That's the only way we can survive. We are here to guide you, we are here to learn from you, we are going to walk this road together. So we are going to push for 9 to 10 tons per hectare. Are we going to do it? We are looking at a benchmark before 20, 20, 20, 25, we should reach here. In the face of low prices for rice in the world the market and the stiff competition for a share of those markets, Guyana's producers must pay keener attention to all aspects of their production. They must be able to lower cost and increase yield, a reality that some farmers are already having through better agronomic practices and the incorporation of science in their cultivation.
The question of value added in rice production has also been touted as a key alternative in the face of the challenges to sell the raw product at competitive prices. But according to the GRDB's chief scientist, salvation could be steering farmers in the face. Dr. Posad says aromatic varieties of rice is in demand and is considered an exotic product and currently sells for between 800 to 1500 US dollars per ton. When we say that we are going to develop an aromatic variety in Guyana, many of us say, well, many more of trial and field. That was some of the good comments I had from my colleagues. There are many scientists that came here and tried it and it failed. Many countries around the world have tried aromatic rice and they couldn't develop a variety that, is, that performed locally. And they failed. And they will tell you too. And the, the literature will tell you that it's very difficult to bring aromatic variety. It's very difficult to combine all the good traits. It, it's very difficult to recover the traits. There are so many problems in dealing with aromatic variety in breeding. But the, the team on the resource station, they thought, we, if someone can do it, if India can do it, if US can do it, we can do it. And I'm pleased, and many farmers and millers are here, now we have already have our first aromatic rice variety out here for farmers and millers. That's not the end of the story. I'm saying, that's not my guess. My guess is yet to come. And in coming years, in the next, uh, Minister, I don't want to say in, in years, you will pronounce that, I'll give you the name. Well, I'll say before 2020, 2019, 2020, before that, we'll have our second, at least our second aromatic varieties, variety for our farmer. What? what? Why we are passionate about this? Why are we so passionate about aromatic variety? It's not because many persons around the world can do it and we, we have now tread the line to do it and we're going to gain international recognition for that. We're going to pack ourselves on the market. Yes, that's one. But most importantly, if any one of us just start on the internet, and everyone is internet ready now, and check the price for aromatic rice on the international market, there you will see Conventional, the normal rice is three fifty four hundred dollars per ton. Aromatic, last night I checked. Anyway, from eight hundred to fifteen hundred US dollars per ton. We in business once we can perfect our art, and once we can do that, that's right. You never give up on being a grass. Yes. 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 To complement that, it is predicted that the amount of the demand for aromatic rice on the international market cannot be fulfilled. And even if we have an average price of 800, okay, say 700, it's almost double than what we get for our local rice, our conventional rice now. In his feature address at the Burma Research Station's Open Day, Agriculture Minister Noel Holder who, in referring to the challenges facing the local industry, spoke of the importance of adding value to the product and potential pools through the cultivation and marketing of aromatic rice. Some of these answers lie in improved varieties, enhanced productivity, good agricultural practices, reducing cost of production for increased competitiveness in our markets, and value added rice production. The approach of this institution then, we will impact on the viability of the rice industry. With our marketing situation, some good news has emerged in the GRDB 30, Guyana's first specialty rice, or aromatic rice, which will develop scale of burn. After introduction on the domestic market, we are now preparing to trade the high price product on the international market. Aromatic rice constitutes a special group of rice, which is known as the best quality of rice worldwide. Aromatic rice is currently paid at US $1,200 per ton, as compared with regular rice, currently at $350 to $400 per ton. This could very well carve the usual direction to rice production and trade for Guyana, but it has a significantly higher market price. 
The Agriculture Minister stressed that all aspects of agronomic practices relative to rice cultivation, pest and disease management have been worked out by the research station and farmers apprised of the best practice in this regard, but that unless farmers incorporated these best practices into the cultivation, then its benefits in terms of yield realized would not be maximized. Minister Holder also spoke of the station's efforts in the area of germ plasma. Farmers, here is an important reminder. The slaughter of productive female cattle is counterproductive to the long-term growth of the local cattle industry. It has been revealed that of the 18,000 cattle slaughtered annually for beef, 50% are productive females. This is an illegal practice in the absence of adequate veterinary certification and can result in heavy fines and imprisonment of up to two years. The Guyana Livestock Development Authority, GLDA, is advising cattle farmers to desist from the slaughter of uncertified productive females. In the event a farmer has earmarked productive females for slaughter, the GLDA will offer to buy those animals from the farmer. Farmers who wish to take advantage of this offer can contact the GLDA on telephone number 220-6556-7 of the GLDA veterinarian in your area. Stop the slaughter of productive females. Help in the national effort to increase the stock of quality herds. A message from the GLDA. Ministry of Agriculture. Householders, the fumigant aluminum phosphide, commonly known as carbon tablets, is a highly restricted use pesticide that should only be handled by trained professionals in the pest control business. This fumigant is among the deadliest in the world and should only be applied in sealed or enclosed places. It must never be used in the home, office, or where humans live, work, or play. It is not a rat bait and should never be used as such. A message from the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, Ministry of Agriculture. An important aspect of the GRDB's six steps to a successful rice crop is the use of balanced nutrition. One part of this practice includes the incorporation of mixed fertilizers such as the NPKs or separately as TSP and muriate of potash. This is done after the first cut during the dry period. If conditions does not allow for application on dry soil, then the next best time is before leveling. Incorporation before planting ensures that nutrients are present in the soil for access by the young seedlings. Through fertilizer before you, you plow the land or before you, you, you plant. You, you throw the TSP, the, the um, potash, and then you rake, level up your land. And you throw All your fertilizer recommendations should be based on chemical soil analysis. A message from the extension arm of the Guyana Rice Development Board. The Guyana Livestock Development Authority, GLDA, wishes to remind all persons involved in the sale of beef that they must be able to produce an anti-mortem veterinary certificate as well as a post-mortem certificate on the animal that certifies it free from disease or infection before purchasing beef. Consumers are advised to ensure that their butchers and other retailers are able to produce these documents on demand. A butcher's failure to have these important and legally mandated examinations done before and after to slaughter could expose consumers to dangerous diseases such as tuberculosis and other foodborne diseases that can result in serious illness and even death. Symptoms of food poisoning include severe cramps, fever, vomiting, and in extreme cases, severe organ failure that could be fatal. Safeguard your family. Ensure that the beef you buy is certified safe for human consumption. A message from the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, Ministry of Agriculture.
all the time we have on this week's edition of Farmers Connection, a presentation of the Ministry of Agriculture and brought to you this week in association with the Pesticides and Toxic Chemicals Control Board, the Ghana Rice Development Board and the GLDA. Until next week then, I'm Christopher Holden on behalf of the entire production team saying so long. See you around. Yeah.